Hey guys, so we just shot a podcast, which literally we didn't even shoot the podcast. We were just shooting the shit, talking, and absolutely we dropped some heat, some bombs, some badass stuff. You're going to want to hear it. It was pretty cool. So this is my, my buddy Lee. Um, we literally w pro probably deep dove into some stuff that I've never really talked about on camera. So I just want to tell you guys, what you're about to see was a conversation that wasn't planned. It was super cool. And if you guys want to know, kind of like what we talk about behind the scenes, watch this full video. Check it out. Watch me. I'm going to get it how I want to get it. You don't get it. I can do anything. I don't got a limit. I'm going to make my mind up. I'm committed. It might take some time. I might take a minute. I won't give up. I don't give a shit. I do what I want. When I Dude, I think you can be. It's everything's 50-50. 50% stern, 50% love. Mm-hmm. And as long as there's a good balance and rotation, it's like this. Any human being that's in this room, no matter what we say we want, 50% of the time we feel good, 50% of the time we don't. But the 50% of the time we don't feel good, we still push through it. So it's like it's like there's this thing always going on. Half the time in our life, it's like fucking tough. Half the time in our life, it's easy. Half the time in our life, we're on. Half the time in our life, we're off. Everything's like 50-50. But it's just whenever things aren't going right, the winners push through it and no one even notices. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, but we, but so like we show love all the time. Like I'm absolute, uh, we're just, we're happy to be a, he, yeah, accountability. He, he gets you to call your shot on like what you want and then he just holds you to it. Yeah. He holds you to you with fucking love and with pressure at the same time. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's like, it's like, look, do you do lots you want, of one-on-one -on -one meetings with these guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, and then as a whole and in a whole, like we've earned the right to be direct with each other in mm -hmm. front of a, a group setting. Mm -hmm. Um, now listen, I get in trouble for that a lot. Well, but if you don't do it a lot, mm -hmm. you'll get in trouble when you do it. But if you do it every day, then that's the standard. Mm -hmm. So when you do it, it's not surprising. Well, so, yeah. Okay. All right. So, so the hit and miss leader mm -hmm. is misunderstood by everybody. But, but you, before you confront with something, you say, hey, you know, I love you, right? Oh, yeah. You got to ask, you gotta ask for a permission to be direct. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, let me ask you a question. Before we get started today, there's two types of leaders in this world. Would you rather have a leader... That you tell them what you want, and then they don't hold you accountable, and they really don't give a shit if you hit it or not. Would you rather have that one? Or would you rather have a leader that if you tell them what the fuck you want, they fucking hold you accountable, and so that you can hit it? Which one do you want? Extreme ownership. Yeah, do you want the first one, though, or do you want the second one? Everybody says? I want, I want the second, second one. one. What leader do you want to show up to this meeting today? You give him the a second choice. The second one. Okay. So you guys want me to give you the cold hard truth and don't feed your ice cream like a little baby. You want me to treat you like the badasses that you want to become. Is that right? Nice. Okay, cool. All right, let's have a badass meeting then. It's like it's like it's it's, it's and by the way, yeah, but hey, but but the crazy thing is that when they came to work here, they knew what you were going to get into. Come on, man. It wasn't like they showed up yeah. and was like, I wonder what this is going to be. Right. Well, first of all, <laughs> yeah. like Danny knew yeah. that we were crazy. Yeah. So he was like, I want to go run with crazy people. Mm -hmm. They don't make statues of the critics. They make statues of the crazy people that are dreamers. Mm -hmm. And so Danny's like, hey, let's go with the fucking statue makers. Mm -hmm. You know, let's go with the people doing big shit. Let's go with the people who aren't hating, who are building, who are creating, who are fucking builders. Let's go hang out with those people. And that's what we have here. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not, it's not, I mean, I've never had anybody look at me like, why are you being this way? Now, I have been known to be hard at times. And what I've learned is that that's when I've become disconnected with myself. Yeah. Uh, when I'm not being loving. Right. Um, and that's not good. It's not no. healthy. No, yeah, it is huge. Yeah, it's not I, healthy I've been for in a lot me. of those places. I was in that place when that whole fight thing was going on. Yeah. Dude, you listen. Know, I hey. got into a whole like just. Well, rager well what happens and I fucking raged out in the middle of a ring and didn't even hold my composure well what happens though is it happens to all of us okay that's why um people are always like talking shit on people mm -hmm. and i always say well i've met him and i don't think that about him so i don't know okay like, like was, what dean graziosi said yeah but if you're gonna meet me right mm -hmm. and i'm just gonna say like if you're gonna meet me and then you're going to talk shit on me like then that's cool because like then i wasn't right to you or i wasn't loving to you or maybe i was on a bad day and i'm sorry about that but like anybody that wants to talk shit like i when i meet someone normally people will feel differently from what they've heard on the internet or someone else or for anything right. else i've had people say this lee guy i'm sure you had people say that andy guy right and people say well this guy over here well listen 
truth is, is they probably were at some point a piece of shit, but yeah. they're not anymore. So who cares? Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't the whole goal as in this coaching industry and in this leadership industry to believe in people that they can change? Okay. So the guy was having a shitty day. The guy was a piece of shit a month ago. Okay, cool. Listen, dude, I was a shit. I was a piece of shit too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, everybody has a past. Everybody has bad days. Um, and dude, like we just, we got to keep growing. So, you know, we don't get hung up when we make mistakes. You know, we own our shit and then we just get better. Yeah. And, and you need to be around people though that operate that way because those people will make you better. And I know when I mess up, if I go into my team too hard and I, I don't, I don't do it a lot. I'll, I'll run soft phases and then hard phases, soft phases, hard phases, soft phases, hard phases. But I always make sure that they understand where I stand and that I want to be with them when it's hard. I want to be with them. By the way, my team knows I want to fill their pockets full of money. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. My team knows I want to fucking take them out to nice steak dinners and do cool shit and have great lives and make sure that their family's taken care of. My team knows that I don't want to be with them when it's easy. I want to be with them when it's hard. They know that stuff. They never question any of that because I've always shown them when it was hard that we were there for them. I've, I've always reminded them and we've always been there and we've always kept our word. We, we don't allow people in our company to talk shit on each other. And so like, there's this company deal that says, hey, if that guy, if you don't like him, you guys go talk to each other face that? to face. Just have just quote, communication. Yeah. Yeah. Like, dude, nobody here. Intention yeah, I know for real. We call it protecting the house. But yeah, no, but nobody here intentionally wants to be a, a, a bad person to right. anybody. Um, but D Danny may do something and he didn't understand when he was doing it that it offend, that it uh, that it hurt someone else. Mm -hmm. So the person that he hurt should go to Danny and say, Hey, Danny, when you did that, I didn't like that. Mm. And it really upset me. And Danny should say, thank you for having the courage to come tell me because most people would go fucking complain behind my back. And that right there would have really like upset me. But the fact that you have the courage to come tell me, thank you for being a man. And I appreciate that. And number one, I didn't mean to do that to hurt you. Mm -hmm. That I never meant to do that. I wasn't trying to backstab you. I wasn't trying to undercut you um so let's figure out how to make it right because i never would want to do that to you so one of the biggest reasons why i was attracted to work here or work with you is about how big you've built the uh coaching business mm -hmm. you know and you know i mean it's really it's 2020 you've been doing it probably even four, four years yeah shorter time than me mm -hmm. so walk me through sort of the graduating steps you know like you know year to year um, self-development. Mm -hmm. Well, biggest thing is self-development mm -hmm. for me. And then once I proved that I could take myself through this journey and become this, then I just started to bring on one-on-one, -on -one, uh, people who are like us. And then, um, you know, through trial and error, we tried to figure, we figured the system out, you know, who was right for us, who wasn't. We really stayed away from high producers, high earners, mm -hmm. and we stayed more towards people who were scarred and broken, mm -hmm. who who were weaponized mm -hmm. by our coaching program, mm -hmm. who wanted to go out and have a, a purpose to change other people's lives because they changed their life in our in our coaching program. Yeah, see, I just started offering a coaching program to people, you know, like just everyone trying mm -hmm. to get in. The roofing business is a great business to get in. I mean, mm -hmm. you've seen a lot of opportunities. Oh, what do you think about the roofing business? Oh, huge. Yeah, everybody can make a lot of money. It's just insane. I mean, I think that the culture of the roofing industry, and, and matter of fact, all industries, is pretty dog shit. Yeah. Um, so if you can just if you can just become a great leader, and dude, it's always okay. And we'll say this, uh, and we'll start this, but re resetting. Tell me why. Let's go to the details. Of why roofing culture's dog shit? Well, because a lot of the times, I mean, look at the environments in which people are in. Um, are the people are most roofers in really good shape? No. Most why? roofers smoke cigarettes. No, no, no. But why? Uh, because they're drinking, eating bad, not working out. Because they don't have a good happening. leader. Like, they don't have a good leader. Mm. That's a very good choice. If I had a roofing company, you don't think they'd be smoking cigarettes and fat, do you? Fuck no. <laughs> right? They, it doesn't matter what we do. What matters is the ideology of the leader. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are standards? Okay? If standards don't exist, don't expect them 
but if the standards don't exist, then you know, don't don't expect everybody to be great. Uh, core values are they on a wall in the cafeteria, or does everybody every morning scream them at each other in each other's face and they live them, eat them, sleep them, breathe them? You know, does the team hang out with each other on the weekends because they all love each other? You have a bunch of core values. Some people are like a couple. You got like how many? Yeah, I mean, there's like fifteen. Like fifteen 20. or twenty. It's like a it's like the twenty commandments of the Elliott Army. I know. What's the most important? Hustle Summit 2. It's right around the corner, y'all. What I want to do is get you in the room. Last time, Hustle Summit, the very first one, it was standing room only. We packed the house in less than 30 days. What I want you to do is don't take my word for it. Don't take my advice. Listen to what the people that actually showed up. Information has been on point that you can go home and actually start doing right now. We're part of Eric's coaching program, but his specific form of sales, he speaks well in teaching us what to do on these calls. The energy is super vibrant, obviously. Eric's bringing up all the heat here. To get my frequency up, man, this has been the perfect place. High energy levels, man, and so it's it's going great so far. The energy is infectious. The people, everybody's here is ready to get after it. Everybody here is wanting to make a change in their life or their business. You're walking into a different reality. I know that he has a track record of doing this business at a high level. So salespeople respect high-level salespeople. Hustle Summit Live. Make sure you're at the next one. And for those of you that are wondering, is this for me? Yes, this is for you. Whether you're just thinking about getting started in the wholesale industry, you're working that nine to five, you're in the rat race wondering, how do I get out of this? You may be a wholesaler that just can't get consistent results or you're thinking about building a team and you don't know where to go from here. Or all you realtors out there wondering, can I get out of the traditional real estate and go into the wholesaling where I hear about these big fat juicy spreads that my commissions possibly couldn't equate to. If that is for you, you're qualified to put your ass in the room. And for everybody that's wondering, where is Hustle Summit 2 gonna be? It's in Scottsdale, Arizona, y'all, at the Lion's Den, Andy Elliott's office. I'm telling you, this is the place that you want to be. I'm gonna show you how to consistently make between 20 to $100,000 a year, like clockwork, so you can finally get paid what you're worth. Scottsdale, Arizona, the lion's den. I trust in God. Okay. Yeah. God, God first. first. I like that. Yeah, God first. And by the way, like, we, I tell my guys, I'm like, listen to me, as long as you have a good heart and you examine your heart every day, mm -hmm. that's what God cares about. Okay. I cuss a lot. I go through phases. I went through six months without cussing. Then I got crazy again with cussing. Um, my mouth may need to be fixed. I understand there's certain things. Everybody has their own struggles and issues. I get mad whenever I see more in people than they see in themselves, and I tend to start throwing F-bombs at people. Um, but <laughs> yeah, my, me too. But my heart is good. And as long as your heart's in it, I think that you can – well, number one, without love, you're bankrupt. Mm. So, like, the love part is the God part, and that's why that's first. And so we shower everybody with love. We make sure that everybody understands how much we love them, our clients, our customers, our family – us, our team, ourselves. We gotta love ourselves. Um, all of these things start with love, and then we just go down to like, you know, taking ownership, mm. responsibility. You know, um, you know, standard setter. I mean, be the fucking example. Take the initiative. There's a piece of trash on the ground. If you don't pick it up, you're, you don't take the initiative. Okay, take responsibility. Did you see a piece of trash on the ground? Pick it up. Like that's what you do. That's that's human excellence. It has, remember, leadership isn't a title. Leadership is a skill of influence. And if you want to influence other people to be great, pick the shit up. And so, you know, we don't have, um, our company doesn't have any managers, doesn't have any whatever, like positional positions. There's me and Jackie, which were the founders. And then everybody that we've hired, they don't need babysitters. I don't want babies. I don't need to babysit anybody. Everybody's an adult. Danny's an adult. Everybody's an adult. They know what they need to do. They come into work to ask him. I said, do you want me? Does anybody need a babysitter? No. Well, why the fuck would I go waste money to go hire somebody to babysit my team? That's why standards are there. If everybody understood their standards, they could all do their job with those standards and they could all produce high. And you give the guys that have been around here a lot of time to build their own team within you, right? Yeah. Everybody around here is 1099, right? 
Yeah, so leaders, right? So there's three rules to leadership. Number one, there's leadership, right? And then there's self-leader. Well, there's leaders. There's self-leadership, which means if you can't lead yourself, you can't lead anyone else. So, like, there's you. And then if you are self-leading yourself, other people want to be led by you because they look up to you because now they want to follow you because they want to be like you. So a follower is somebody who voluntarily decides to follow somebody without money involved. They're like, I want to be like you. So once you self-lead, now you can build leaders. That's the phase two is building leaders. And once you build leaders, then you go to phase three, which is building leaders that build more leaders. Um, Danny has, what, 10 guys underneath you that you lead every day? I mean, he's building them to be leaders. I don't need to come into work. I don't even do the meetings in the morning a lot. Sometimes I'll go through sprees where I do them, but a lot of times I don't need to do them. If I'm not here, the team knows. Nobody needs to look. Who's ready? Let's roll. They do the sales creed. They train. They practice. They, they do everything. They train from 8.15 to 9 o'clock every morning, no matter what, like clockwork. And we just, we, we self-run. We're self You know my events? Mm-hmm. The events are fucking huge. Bro, if anybody was here yesterday, it was. I saw it. Bro, it was fucking crazy. But the event from 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 Saturday morning, right, mm-hmm. to, to, to the workout, to bringing all the equipment outside, out of the gym, to, to, to working all out, to going crazy, to shits everywhere, 500 people working out, to the cleanup, to, to wiping all the weights down, to putting them up, to getting ready for that night, to people hanging out with the customers, to everybody coming back in again, to us taking pictures, to 500 people, to doing all this, to eating dinner to getting them all out of here, to cleaning it all up, to the next morning, to checking in 500 people, to have them sit where they need to sit, having the event, going through everything, to the event being over, to cleaning up. Everything. There wasn't one janitor here. It was all done by sales teams. It's, 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 it's an army. It's, it's, a tr- it's an environment in which it was built of just fucking brotherhood. Like, like there's... There's an environment in which in the military, somebody would jump on a grenade to die, to not go home and see their family so that other people can go home and see their family. That environment is why people would do that, and they'd only do it because they know that someone else would do it for them. I was attracted to that vibe. I could tell about the people. I could tell about the culture. And, you know, as a guy who spent a lot of money in personal development, Mm -hmm. every time I pay for an influencer, there's a lot of times I ruffle a lot of feathers. Okay. Mm -hmm. First time with Grant Cardone. You know, he, he got mad at me a few different times and got, you know, I started selling coaching, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, over there, those guys, they work really, really hard. I thought that was the standard for uh, like a coaching uh, sales platform. Over here, it's different. You know, yeah, well, we don't have a sales platform. We're labeled as sales trainers mm-hmm. as like a sales platform. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we're not, I mean, that's just our label. We're just a d- development company. I mean, really, at the end of the day, we can go through a profit and loss statement with a business owner, and we can show him where the buckets of cash are in his company. We can take a salesperson, we can teach him the road to a sale, teach him word tracks, teach him how to believe in himself, get self-esteem, self-confidence, you know, self-belief. We can teach him all that shit. Then also, we can take a guy over here that just lost, don't know who the fuck he is, and just can't find any purpose. We can put that motherfucker back on track and totally recreate his life. And so like, so like, we're just like, we're an all. And so people say, well, what exactly do you do? Just develop people. So like my industry, like roofing, like where do you see yourself playing a role in roofing over the next five years? Well, so half of our companies Mm -hmm. or half of the people we do business with, we train 10,000 companies. We have 500,000 sales reps. Okay. Mm -hmm. That do business with us. Right. So everybody's rolling up all these companies and all these home service spaces right mm-hmm. now. Like it's going on everywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. So where we've played a big part is just in developing the leadership mm-hmm. and then developing the sales teams to do well in the companies. Um, there's a lot of places that we can play, you know, but like that's been our primary deal. We love human capital. You know what I'm saying? We do. Um, yeah. So that's where we it's play. The reason why I'm here. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, so a lot of people, there's like, there's, there's inventory. Like some people need inventory to mm-hmm. grow their companies. Um, some people know, need marketing. By the way, we know how to market. Like we've done a well, good job. We get 150 million views every 50, every 28 days. Um, we've cracked the internet wide open. So like we love that stuff. Um, but there's marketing. Some people need buildings. They need uh, they need properties. I'm like I need a new building. I need got to do this or that. We've learned that the number one hole with most companies is that they don't know how to develop their people right. 
and they don't or they don't have the right people so um, I have companies and they're around us all the time and they say Andy I need the right people okay well number one the right people won't go work for the wrong leader so the first thing we got to do is I say okay cool listen so you want me I have a great influence you want me to take my fire breathing dragons these people in the world right now that are looking for a great organization a great leader and they're gonna give all they got and you want me to bring them to you is that what you want and they're like yeah that's what I want I'm like cool who's in charge show me who's in charge of these killers because they would come work for me, mm -hmm. but I need to know who's in charge. So the first thing that we do is that we train leaders and companies. So like where I f would fit in, and in, in let's say the roofing industry, is that someone would say, you know, like I, I need the right people. Okay, cool. Let's make sure we have the right leader, because step two is getting the right people. But if the right people come and the wrong leaders there, the right people will leave right away. So like we want to train the leaders first, and the leaders need to be self developed. They, to themselves, not to other people. Remember, leadership isn't a position. Remember I told you, like, it's not a position. People will work for the boss for a paycheck. People will work for the leader for blood, sweat, and tears. Right. And so if you got these blood, sweat, and tear type people, like Danny's a blood, sweat, and tear type guy. Like, he was going to give everything he's got. But I'm going to assure you that that guy is not going to work for somebody that doesn't feel like he's going to die for him. Mm -hmm. And most people don't die for their people. And we're in, a, we're in a world right now, especially since COVID happened, right? And people had to wear a mask and stand six feet apart. And people were made for communion. And people got separated. And nobody really cares anymore. Customer service at an all-time low. Um, people just don't give a shit. People made a lot of money when it was easy. And then when it got hard, they blamed it on everybody. Everybody wants to take credit when they win. Everybody wants to blame everybody when they lose. Um, you know, it's like we're in a time right now where there's a scarcity of leadership across the world and all these people want to find it. They want to find this leadership. And so I was just going to say that I think if you create that leadership, the people come. Mm. It's worked for me. That's look, me spending money on personal development, a million bucks. It started with grants, spend, your whole spent life. the money with everybody. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I'm sure you were on along the same journey, Yeah. but it's literally me like as an organization, the fish rots from the head and you know, where I am right now though, is trying to, you know, make a big play. Mm -hmm. And I really am about like my biggest purpose in life, which is like, I'm on a mission. Mm -hmm. I feel like what we do is the easiest sell in America. I think it is a great place for people to not just learn the sales, mm -hmm. but to build a real business that's sellable, not mm -hmm. a sales organization, but a real business mm -hmm. that could be worth eight figures. I truly believe it's the fastest pace to an eight figure net worth. So, so when you build those, so mm -hmm. there's two, there's, there's, so everybody rolling up these companies, right? Mm -hmm. They're taking these companies that are small and that, you know, are doing a million, two million, and then they're, they're acquiring them, you know, taking equity. And then they're, they're getting them by plugging in, you know, the things that they need to plug in uh, to get them to 10 million and then rolling them up 10 of them and then selling them all as a whole. When I say scalable and sellable, what I consider scalable and sellable is a business that could operate without the leader in it mm. because if you sell it to somebody and it doesn't how well you build a company to me mm. right is if i sold a, if i built a business and i sold it and one year after i sold it it lost money i would feel horrible and so i may be able to build it because i'm in it but once i remove myself i just set the other person up to fail and it's so, one of the reasons why I'm here, because the company depends on my brand to recruit, and I'm one of the biggest. Well, you can recruit it, but the deal, and that's okay. But yeah. my, my idea of it is is putting the building the right people. Like honestly, like with the Elliot Group. Yeah. Um, and this is why I say that, like, if if I was going to build the Elliot Group to sell, okay, I'm doing it right. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because if I die today, my team can run my company without me. Mm. Okay, now they might miss me. That happened to one of Brad's buddies here, remember? Yeah, but, but they might miss me. They might love me. But every day in every meeting, you know what I've said? I said, guys, there's a chance today that I could die. And if I die today, I need you guys to know that we're ready to run. This place looks a lot different than I'm sure that situation. But Yeah, but I just want you to know that our team is ready. So my goal is, is that what is a sellable and a scalable company? To me, it's a company in which if you removed yourself, it could still run without you. Mm -hmm. And I believe if I was an investor, and mm -hmm. I know they, they operate off EBITDA, but that company that I know that's being ran by somebody, that he built it to mm -hmm. run without him, 
because everybody loves what they do. Everybody has missions in the company. Everybody has purpose in the company. People don't just work for the company for money. They work for the mission of what the company does. Everybody's been built right. That company could sell for any amount of money, not just at what the normal EBITDA is on that company, but because of how that company was built. Mm. Every, every person that's wanting to acquire a company, if they could see inside and see how that company was built from the ground up and the culture and the core values and the people that are there, dude, listen, people would pay twice as much. Well, God and personal development go hand in hand, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I always say that my most important uh, core value is personal development. Because when somebody stops developing, I mean, you're either growing or you're dying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've never seen anybody happy that doesn't have progress in their life. And so... What about, like, I have people that are heavy on spiritual development, mm -hmm. but maybe aren't going to the gym or maybe aren't grinding at the at the office for their family they should. What do you, what do you, because I mean, these are specifically people within my company. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? Well, it, well, so number one, everybody can be sold on everything. It just depends on who's delivering the information. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I would do if somebody wasn't working out, I would say something like, hey, listen, let me ask you a question. Okay. If I could double your income, which means you could literally get a pay raise right now, like, like I'm going to give you a pay raise right now. I'm going to double your income and I could tell you how and it was guaranteed and it was insured. Would you do it? Yeah. Okay. If you're in a better mood every day that you came to work, listen to me, you're in a better mood. You're in the best state of your life, right? Do you think that you would produce higher? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, if I could guarantee and ensure and there was a magic pill that you could take every day that you came into work that put you in your best state, why don't you think about the last month? Think about the best day you had, the best day that you felt the best. Remember that day? The way you felt, the way you thought, the way you controlled everything, the way that you were just ready that day? That day you were dangerous. What if I could ensure and guarantee that for 365 days a year, right? 25, 7, 365, you could stay in that state and be in that place. Would you take, would you, would you take that pill? Yeah. Okay, let me tell you what pill it is. You got to get moving in the morning. Okay, I don't want you to go to the gym. I don't want you to, I just want you to take this. You get moving, you have momentum, and you do some form of exercise. And if you can do that for 30 minutes every morning, every morning before you come into work, you're going to put yourself in a better mood for the next 12 hours. I want you to test me for the next 30 days. I want you to get out, even if it's a walk with your wife in the morning and you're walking around the neighborhood. That's fine with me. I'm cool with that. But you're going to want to do more. You're going to get bit by the bug. Once you start doing this momentum thing, you're going to be like, well, what if I jog today? Okay. And we're like, well, what if I sprinted to that mailbox and then I jogged and I walked? It's like the, 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 the bug, get, they get bit by the bug. So people are like, hey, you need to go to the gym. You need to eat right. They're a long ways away from that. They're not going to do it. But if I say, hey, you need to get up, go for a walk in the morning with your kid. Hey, can I ask you a question? How many kids you got? I got three kids. One of the ways that I've found that I've gotten closer to my children is I go on what I call a daddy walk with my kids every morning. Okay. I choose one of my kids and every week I take one of them on a walk for 30 minutes every morning. And I every morning, just three times, just three days a week. Cause I got three kids once a week. I take them on a walk. It's called daddy walk. It's a good idea. Yeah. It's 30 minutes. I just take them on a walk and I just, I just say, Hey, I'm, I'm going to listen. Just talk to me. And it's not about me, it's about them. And first couple times you do it, you know, they don't really, uh, it's kind of weird, you know, because they're trying to express themselves. But then once they do it, they find that it's the highlight of their week. They get to tell dad about everything that's going on. Um, they know that it's just our time. There's not the sister and the brother and anybody else running around. And they know that I'm not giving them any lessons. I'm not lecturing them. I'm not parenting them. I'm just being their buddy. We're holding hands. We're walking and that. Now, I would tell someone, could you, can you do that? Can you do that with your wife, your kids? Can you, can you do that? Um, that right there is momentum. That right there is exercise. That right there is good for your family. That right there feeds your soul. That right there feeds your heart. That right there puts you in a better mood for the next 12 hours. That right there is the missing piece to production. That right there can only be instilled in someone if a leader is present. Dude, if the leader isn't present, the, the trust is gone. Mm. And so the leader in the home, the leader in the world, the leader in the business, like this is why I said the le leadership is the most scarcest thing on planet Earth. And so um, that's why I'm just like a total obsessive leadership person. And that's been the secret to our entire everything. Uh, my wife, you haven't met her yet, but you'll meet her over here when you meet her. You're going to see like, holy shit, she is so awesome. Like she's a killer. 
Um, I see her. She's killing it. Wait till you meet her, though. She's unreal. She's so amazing. We we immerse uh, together every day in, in doing everything together. I mean, we, we talk about being marriage millionaires without any money involved. Um, we wake up every morning, right? Like, um, you know, and I'll, I'll just for two seconds, I mean, you know, if you go you, and, you know, you like every morning, you know? <laughs> I saw that this morning. It's every morning. Yeah. 5 a.m. Cold plunging. Cold plunging. Me, my wife, every morning. She doesn't want to get in that 40 degree water. But you know what she has? FOMO. Fear of missing out. I say, hey, babe, I'm going to come out here. I'm going to get in this cold plunge. And I love you. And I would love for us to suffer together. And by the way, there's this thing that when we're done and we get out of the water, we know that we did it. And there's some people today that didn't. It's an edge, babe. I'd love for you to come get a taste of this edge with me. By the way, babe, mental clarity is what me and you crave because we run a big business. We do a lot of shit. We use our brain all day. What if I was to tell you this morning, I could give you the, the highest level of mini cl- mental clarity you've ever had, and you'd have it immediately. And within literally just three minutes, you'd get out of that thing, ready to take over the world. That's what I'm going to go get. I want you with me. I need you with me. Come on. And I always walk out of the room, and I go outside, and as I'm getting the towels ready, and as I'm about to get in, there she comes, walking outside. She always goes, which means the leader has to go and then she's just right there as you scale you got social going everywhere you got deals going everywhere you know some of these guys are on the instagram all the time they're doing deals but you know i find myself sometimes i've been caught up in it before and one of the biggest things you've kind of has been heavy on my shoulders is checking the phone at the doorstep you know um being where your feet are mm-hmm. um you ever struggle with that mm-hmm. you do yeah social media loves me i know so i love it, it doesn't it kind of suck you in yeah, but I understand that social media is fake. Mm. Okay? So those endorphins and all those things that I feel, it's all fake. It's all fake. Like, you know what's real? Going in and spending time with your family. Right. Um, I, I love that this technology exists. Matter of fact, our business wouldn't be where it is without it. Um, but there's a lot of people that, that we give a lot of information to on this, and we make sure that we do our job right. Um, so we can share the, these people like with a lot of love, but at the end of the day, I create events, I create zoom meetings with people to show up on. Um, I create opportunities for these people to be with me all the time. I give away free content all day long. It costs me a lot of money. My social media costs me a hundred grand a month, at least who I pay and what I'm doing. And, um, and I spend that money cause I love my clients. And so I want to make sure that they get value for free. So some of them have never paid me. They've never gone to anything. And I've given them a lot of value for free. That's changed their life. Um, I spend that money so that I can give back. I give that to them. But there has to be a point in which also I understand that as much as I want to change the world, my direct responsibility is to change my daughter's, both of my daughter's life, who were just in here, uh, my son's life, my wife's life, and also my team's life. If you were to ask, and by the way, a lot of people don't like to talk about this, but I'm super open about this. Mm. What's the order of presence in which somebody should put these three things as a leader? Profits, customers, employees. Um, What one should be first, what one should be second, what one should be third? Profits, employees, or customers? I would say employees, customers, profit, but that's kind of, is that backwards? I don't know. What do you think? I, that's what I would do. Okay. You're right. But most people choose, well, I'd put my customers first because without customers, we don't have money. If we don't have money, we don't have employees. Yeah. Or they'd say, well, I'm going to put the profits first because if we don't make money, right? We can't have employees. Well, we can't have a business. So then maybe this or that. It's simple. You always put your people first. The, the, the number one job of a company is to take care of the people that work in that company. And if they take care of the people that work in that company, those people will take unbelievable care of the customers. Mm -hmm. And in order to make the customer service go through the roof, the people in the company have to be taken care of. Have you ever seen a company that didn't take care of their customers, or their their employees take good care of their customers? Never. Because people that aren't happy in a company don't take care of the customers. 
So I took really good care of all my people. And my people are like my children. Danny is like my kid. Like, and you say, well, what does that mean? Regardless of age, if I have another person who's 44 years old in my company and I'm 44 years old, that guy, or even 50 years old, that guy's still my kid. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means I don't want anybody to harm my children. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to hurt my kids. I don't, I don't want to see my kids go broke. I don't want to see my kids suffer. I don't want to see any of that stuff. So every day I'm figuring out how to take care of them. So it's the, it's the greatest mentality that I can explain on the way that I feel. If me and my wife cut a check that we believe is smaller than what we believe somebody on our team is worth because they had a bad month, it hurts our heart. So it bothers us. That care factor has built a company that can't, that I haven't ever seen personally built before. Um, I build people. I make people. Most people, they say, you got to go find high it's producers. It's so crazy that you're all based off of care, but then I was studying the social blade. I've been touching a little virality. We got like 8 million views this month organically. Mm -hmm. We're starting to pop. That's great. And I was looking at your social blade. It was like September of 2023 or something. It just went <clears throat> through the mm -hmm. roof. You, what was that? Was that the six pack and the guy on the stage, the mean Andy? Is that what made it go viral? Or was it just, it just a combination finally, of all of it? Or? Our just company decided to level up. Uh -huh. I mean, honestly, dude, um, me and about 15 of my guys, uh -huh. yeah, it was about 15 of us, uh, we flew to Andy Frazella's. Oh, yeah, uh, we went right. to First Form. Um, we spent the day with Andy. We went back and had dinner at his house that night. And I ain't never seen anything fucking like it. I'm not even fucking around. I mean, from the way the chairs were pushed in to the way that there wasn't a drop of water on the faucet in the bathroom to the way that there wasn't a scuff mark on the floor. It's fucking, and, and there's, and there's, it's a, it's a, it's a 77, there's three 77,000 square foot buildings. My bigger than the Amazon building. I have it on, a, on, a, on my phone as a visualization, just like well, as what I want to build as a 100,000 square foot facility. It's amazing. Dude, listen, ev there's a thousand employees and every one of them are operating in sync. In the cafeteria, anywhere from the energy drinks to the sandwiches to the food, everything is faced out, just perfect, same angle, just perfect. Nothing is out of place. Everyone has such a standard. And the standards are accept responsibility and take the initiative. Every wall you look at has standards all over it, core values. Every wall has a core value. You can't look anywhere and not see a core value. And when I saw it, it made me understand that there was a whole new level in which our company needed to, to go to. So then we created Elliott Army 3.0. Mm. And immediately I went from my six core values and standards that really were just on a fucking board in the cafeteria to what I said, was, which was embarrassing, to what do we really believe in? What do we stand for? Why are we here? What's our purpose? Why, when we wake up in the morning and the fucking life punches us in the face, why won't we stop? What's going to keep us going? What's our why? And what are we going to be anchored to daily to give all we got? And we all sat down. We came up with these values. And there were a lot. That was good. I said, guys, if we could live by these, we're going to fuck some shit up. And so, so we did. And, and we put them on every screen in the company. And you that, traveled like crazy. I can remember you were, you were going like fucking crazy. Right? We were gone for a year. We oh, lived yeah. down I'm a, doing we, that right now. Mm -hmm. I saw what you did. Mm -hmm. But you got to be careful. I'm going to tell you something real quick. Tell me what I need to be careful of. When you leave your company, I know. when you leave your company, if your team isn't ready, mm -hmm. you'll come back to your company being gone. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like, listen, man, when I was gone, my team really missed me but they knew why I was on the road. I'm doing right now sort of something. And I needed my team it's too. So like it was both, we all needed it each other. It was such a conflict of interest because I, at first I hired Grant to teach me how to grow a business. I'm a $10 million struggling door to door insurance roofer. Mm -hmm. And then just to keep paying Grant's bill, cause it was like 10 grand a month. And you know, it was a lot of money for personal development. Mm -hmm. And I had this idea to sell him a roof. And so it took 18 months to do his roof. I finally got to do his roof. And in that meantime, I had to start selling training to pay my coaching bill. And now I'm a roofing sales coach. And like over time, it's evolved. 
And whenever I was coaching other roofers and not focusing on my own, own business, at times it's like, hey, dude, why don't you build your own business? You got holes in your game. There's problems. Mm -hmm. You don't know retail. You don't know marketing. You're not the best operator. You don't have core values. You're losing people. So wh who are you to teach? And so I learned sometimes from my own mastermind, like from everybody, the good, mm -hmm. the bad, the people that are doing more, the people that are doing less. And basically it's been the best thing for me is – coaching mm -hmm. it's helped me basically simplify my system and make my system work i've got 400 million in results for other roofers all these people trying to roll up roofing companies they don't got what i got andy mm -hmm. i have the marketing systems recruiting systems the infrastructure and we're putting on 3,000 roofs a year i like that and so a lot of times people do give me shit and you know what? I have gone all the way maxed out before. I have had my credit lines maxed out. There yeah. has been times where... No, I when acquired... you put all the chips on the table, I mean, anytime you go for a big life, all the chips are on the table every day. So, you know, you like Dimitri's post. I was a bit of a bully, but the guy is like calling me a Ponzi scheme because if somebody says you can't pay a bill, that makes you a Ponzi scheme in construction. Well, the biggest thing is, is no matter what he said, only you know the truth, Okay. I have people that say shit about me all the time, and honestly, half of it is the truth, or there's some truth in it. I did a lot of shit in the past that I didn't like, a lot of shit that I'm not proud of, but I, I had to go through that to be who I am now. Amen. I look at myself as just the door-to-door -door guy. Like, honestly, if a guy's like, dude, you almost did this, or you did this, or you fucking, I'm like, yeah, dude. I, actually, I did way worse, and you guys didn't find out about it. And matter of fact, everybody right now should be in prison because everybody's done something and broke the law and didn't get caught. So we should all be in fucking jail. How about that? But my point is, is that I'm like, nobody, because th think about it. If I went through comb through everybody's life, mm -hmm. there could be something that we could hang someone on somewhere that they did something. So my point is, is when you go to become something mm -hmm. and you go to get yourself out there, okay, people are going to start digging up shit because you're doing something. You went outside the boundaries of the box that they put you on. Okay, and, and that's fine. But the fact is, is that, look, maybe you didn't do that. Maybe you did do that. Really, who gives a shit? Who are you now? That's all that matters. And by the way, you can't, it might be a good person that said you did something bad. It might be a bad person that said you did something bad. Listen, I don't need validation from anybody for me to go be a better person. Amen. I'm saying. Okay. It, honestly, like, I don't need everybody to fucking believe in me and shit. I believe in me and I got my family that believes in me. I got my team that believes in me. Okay. That's enough. Over time, now, over time, they'll see what I was after. And what's funny is I was depending too much on somewhat of what the peanut gallery. As the man in the well, arena, I was listening to the idea that if you win the crowd, you win the whole audience. Well, and that's social media. I know. And it's yeah. like that, the crowd ain't paying the bills. Bro, listen, your biggest fans are going to be your biggest haters today. Yeah. Okay. And, and all they want to do is that, and by the way, there's seasons, right? Yeah. So haters go through seasons right now. I'm miserable. I don't like me. I see you doing something that I, I'm like, fuck this guy. I'm going to talk shit on this guy. I'm going to do everything I can to burn this guy to the ground. Um, one day you're going to wake up, you're going to get a bad doctor's report and you're going to realize you're a fucking piece of shit. And you're going to say, God, have a dude, heart attack. no, 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 but something, something's going to fucking happen. You're, yeah. or, 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 or you're going to get an opportunity or, you know, and you're going to be like, God, dude. Like that guy, like what he, did, or you're going to want to do something big in life and you're going to try to pursue it. And you're going to realize, God, man, this is hard. And you're going to think, cause someone's going to hate on you. Dude, I was a piece of shit. I was hating on all these people when they were trying hard. And here I am trying to hard, try hard now. And I see what they were going through. I wonder how they felt. Cause I know how I feel. Hey, that's just part of what guy, like God does. Um, but what I would tell you is this. So you said you're on the road all the time. This is super important. I'm gonna give you some good advice. Um, so I'm talking about Danny. He's over here. Danny knows I'm not a fraud. Okay. So what I preach and what I teach, Danny hears all of what I say and sees all of what I do. And so I would tell you, whatever you're going to tell anyone else to do, you just need to make sure that you're doing it yourself. Why my team grew, our company grew and social media grew when I disappeared out of this company last year for a year and was gone on the road. I didn't see any of them for a year. I mean, honestly, it was, it was a blackout, mm -hmm. but because I was doing and had done everything that I was preaching in the building mm -hmm. and that right there, my team saw me out there basically mm -hmm. sharing the standards we lived. Mm -hmm. And so like they supported it. Right. 
that's really what it was. Sometimes we get to an ivory tower as a leader, and I was focusing on being the social media guy. And mm -hmm. the reality is, is my team needed me to be the selling CEO, the door to door general that's creating the leaders. And it's mm -hmm. one of my best gifts. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been doing this all over the country with the combination of insurance and retail. And I have bought three roofing companies. We have scaled over nine figures. Mm -hmm. And I'm not stopping until we get a billion dollar net worth. Sure. Just like Tommy rolled up 20 garage door companies. Mm -hmm. You know, this is big. Mm -hmm. And I really need your help because the capital that is here, it aligns with my core values. Mm -hmm. And I'm for real. You know, I am. Yeah, I believe that. I can tell by looking at your eyes, you're for real. I am. <laughs> and, you know. Lee, like, one of the things we know about you is that you're crazy. Yeah, I am. One of the things... <laughs> that I know that I think God is doing with you now is he's maturing you. Yeah. Look, I prayed for maturity because honestly, I learned that in order for me to beat my competitors, my next level wasn't skill. Mm -hmm. It was maturity. It's true. I needed to mature. I was too immature to pass that next guy. Mm -hmm. And so my last year has been all about maturity. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about grit. It wasn't about fortitude. It wasn't about excellence. Mm -hmm. It was just about I needed to mature. It's true. My goal was a hundred million. Now my goal is a billion, a billion dollar CEO. I wasn't even close to visualizing or being that guy. Mm -hmm. So once you start saying that shit, disruption follows intention. And I want to tell you, Myron Golden taught me that. And Myron taught me how to make a million a day, speak from stage. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, it's like, I got to figure out how that, you know, we can make a bigger impact in my audience. And I saw that I was falling asleep on the game by not having you at my shit. Mm -hmm. So this blue collar American dream, that's what I fight for. That's to raise the status for the blue collar guy, the average Joe. I like that. And I, whether it's a worker or a sales pro or a car guy, my vehicle, it's fucking good, dude. That mm -hmm. roofing vehicle is something fucking special. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is, is like, uh, you know, forever, helping salespeople build lives, building character, confidence, and freedom, that's my church. Mm -hmm. And so That's your ministry. And I'm going to tell you, there's something too cool. Remember I said maturity, mm -hmm. right? That's a secret. I'm going to give you another secret. Mm -hmm. You know the day my life changed? When's that? It was when my intentions changed. Mm -hmm. Think about your intentions. What, what, what was the intention before? What was the intention after? Just wanted to live for something bigger than me. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started my company, I wanted to take care of myself. Then I wanted to take care of my team. I wanted to take care of my family. And then I wanted to take care of customers. Like, I wanted to make sure customer service was, the was through the roof. And we prov they, they paid for something. We gave them more than what they paid for. That's a great business, right? Yeah. I want it to be more than business. If you're going to stand out in this world and you're truly going to do something that mm. no one's ever done, mm. you have to become something that no one's ever seen. Mm. And how do you do that? Well, it's simple. You change your intentions. Mm. And people in this world right now, they know people's intentions. And so how I think that we blew up like that and why we're continuing to trend harder than even Andrew Tate right now and it's going crazy... It's because our intentions are just so good. Like, we're just, we change the way that we saw things. And so the, the wording of that would be the definition of Andy Elliott's intentions would to be to live a life bigger than yourself. And also your words. You're always the, the four agreements. You're, you're always using, you're impeccable with your word. Mm -hmm. And your word is always speaking like really gifts mm -hmm. to everyone around you. And so oh. sometimes I do fall into a darkness, this Kobe Bryant like dark guy. Mm -hmm. And then you got to be careful and watch what you're plugging into. Yeah. Okay. Cause I'm telling you right now, you're probably l plugging Watching in Vikings on Netflix too much. Turn that shit off. <laughs> Listen, you, you, it, I do watch that shit. Listen, my team can tell if when I walk into a meeting, if I've been listening to Tony Robbins for an hour or if I've been listening to Andy Frazella for an hour. Yeah. They can tell if I've been listening to David Goggins for an hour or if I've been li listening to Ed Milet for an hour. Throw a little Joel Olstein in my life. Yeah. I love Joel. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, like you have to, those are s secrets, Yeah. you know, to like. Maturity? To, yeah, to maturity, man. And by the way. Look, there's a time in your life when you need some Andy Frazella. There's some times in your life when you need some David Goggins. And there's some times in your life where you need some Joel Osteen. And at the end of the day, um, you got to make sure something doesn't take you too extreme mm -hmm. and too far. Because there's got to be a balance with everything. And by the way, work-life like integration. For me, like I fell into the MMA and training and I love just the... Like whenever you have the competitive goal, edge and no, not just that's the endorphins. It's mm -hmm. whenever you're peaking and you, 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 you have your visualization, you leave the workout and now you're crystal clear, believing in it even stronger. 
but to some extent I just got too obsessed with it a little bit and didn't tie in enough of just staying on the whole purpose and well and also you need to decide who you want to become mm -hmm. you know like look I think there's two important things number one who do you want to become mm -hmm. and who don't you want to become look I know a lot of people that are here today well, I hired Wes Watson, and he was my coach. And it's funny you say that because I had to, like, well, but Wes... correct him on my stage. And then it did, it did, he had to leave. And it's the only time I've ever had anyone that I paid leave the stage. Well, I'm like, but I want you... we haven't talked since. <laughs> but but the, the point of that is that you know who Wes Watson is. Mm -hmm. And he's not a bad guy. No, he's not. He helped well, me. Yeah, listen, Wes Watson does things his way. Right. Okay. Now his way might not be your way, correct? But he he has an intention. Mm -hmm. His intention is I'm going to tell you what to do, and you're going to do it, and I'm not going to be your fucking dad, mm -hmm. and that's the end of it. And he's not going to change his language for anybody, and he he operates in Wes and Wes Watson stage, yeah. And he has good in intentions for people, mm -hmm. but he communicates his way, mm -hmm. and he's him. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you need to decide who you want to become, mm -hmm. and who you want to become. You need to get as close as possible to those people, and then you will become those people. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it works. And what I learned is that a lot of people, they need to change. That's why, I like, anytime I'm around somebody, I'm always like, who have you been listening to? Mm -hmm. um, when you work out, who do you listen to? When you do this, who do you listen to? Who are you listening to in the car? Mm -hmm. um, what kind of conversations are you having with your wife? Mm -hmm. Dude, what kind of conversations are you having with yourself? I mean, I need to understand... These people don't come up with this shit on their own. Yeah, I got too obsessed with the UFC. I listened to nothing but Alex Hermosi and super high smart end, guy high end business stuff. Dude, if you listen to Alex Hermosi, you would not be the way you are right now. Well, you you. It's been a while. Yeah, I knew because on the way here I listened to it. Yeah, but uh, that's not I enough. Know. It's like no, going to the gym one time and expecting right. to get in shape. No, you're right. Okay, right. Um, you 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 need to go through. You need to write down three people's names yeah. that you respect. You like the way they treat their families, their kids. Uh, Ed, I know him really well. Yeah, but, like, but he's a good example. But yeah, but those people that you write down, and then you need to say, all right, I need to plug into these guys. Now that's going to be my digital plug-in. Yeah. Digital plug-in means, Podcasts, let's say, well, well, no, no, like let's say if Ed's your guy, mm -hmm. Ed might be your digital guy. Mm -hmm. Ed right now may not be a guy that says, Hey, I'll personally coach you one on one. Mm -hmm. So so he's not gonna be your face to face coach. Right. He's gonna be your digital coach. Right. And by the way, everybody puts most of the stuff out on the internet for free anyways. Mm -hmm. Um there's not really any structure to it. Yeah. But you can find and find listen it. and yeah, go absolutely. through hours of content to try to dig up stuff. Right. And that's how we all got in the self development journey is that we picked up bits and pieces. But then you finally are like, Okay, I need something substance i need substance i need i need eyes god made us for communion to be close like this um you have watched a lot of content with me it's the yeah. first time we sat together we've had phone calls but it's the first time we sit together you may sit here and go man like need I, to spend more time well yeah but i'm I, setting up office out here but i'm thinking like i like this better right mm -hmm. so if you like this better so you're like i need that so we need to think who are the top three people you want to listen to digitally mm -hmm. and then maybe who are the one or two people that you want to coach face to face and then, dude, you you block everything else off. Mm -hmm. Listen, dude, less is more. Less is more. Mastery, um, self awareness. Russell, you, and Ed. I'm I'm pretty good. Right? I'm pretty good there. Yeah, but just self mastery. You've got to go on this mission of self mastery, mm -hmm. which is you finding your identity. And you know, like like what is Lee 3.0? Mm -hmm. Okay, what what does he look like? What does he sound like? What is his behavior? What triggers him? What does he do when he gets triggered? When someone says Lee is a piece of shit, we know what you did, dude. We're gonna we're gonna tell everyone about you. I'm sharing this with the world. What do you do? Where do you go? What happens? Mm -hmm. How do you feel? It happened last week, and honestly, it was a lot better experience after going through like this whole like worst case scenario. God teaches you lessons when you have to go from rock bottom to build up. Mm -hmm. Rock bottom for me was losing a fight, and kind of like I train a lot, and really what I did was I, I tired out and got I talked a lot of shit. I got I mean, I mean it was my own fault. Well, well, you got karma. Yeah, I got karma. But That's you know exactly what? what I fucking got. You you, you might have been able to beat him, but but karma beat you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it was a good lesson. Yeah. By the way. 
you learn from your wins and you learn from your losses. Yeah. And honestly, I think people learn more from wins mm -hmm. than they learn from losses. Because when you win, mm -hmm. when you win, people want to take a picture with you. Everybody wants to tell you how great you, you are. Mean you learn more from the loss than you do from the win. No, I'm, I learn more from the wins. Okay. Because I got to be very fucking careful to understand when I win, mm -hmm. that that win is very fucking temporary. Mm -hmm. And that win... I can be a loser tomorrow that quick. And that someone's always coming for your ass. So you gotta be very careful. You wanna talk about UFC? Like, you know, MMA? When you win a fight in the belt in the UFC, you feel like you're on top of the world. Everybody wants to take a picture with you. Everybody's talking about how great you are. Everybody's talking about how you're the king. Bro, that right there, you usually see those fighters show up for the next fight, not fucking in shape, not fucking prepared not ready and they get embarrassed and they get their ass beat why because that win did something to them here and made them feel like that they were the man because everybody's telling them that they're the man so right now we're killing it on social media and everybody's like oh my god you're the man you're the man you're the man dude listen i'm not hearing that i don't want to look i love you guys thank you that's super kind but i'm not hearing that because i know on a scale one to ten i am a one to my ten mm. So I'm not going to fucking get tricked and think I'm at my 10. They mm -hmm. want me to think I'm at my 10. Mm -hmm. I'm not at my 10. I'm a one. Mm -hmm. So I know where I'm going. So I learn more from wins than I do from losses. Look, I've been losing my whole life. Mm -hmm. So like, look, I'm a broke person with money. I got a chip on my shoulder. I'm fucking pissed off. I know who my enemies are. I can lose. I lose every day. Mm -hmm. I try so hard. I go to failure every day. I lose every day. Mm -hmm. It's when I win that I have to be very careful not to be come ungrounded mm -hmm. in, into this journey of this life of hard work mm -hmm. because it can trick you no i did it i had this huge surge in florida and this whole year where probably years of easy money where i didn't really do what i used to do which was go outside and work hail and kind of just i don't say rest on my laurels but i mean i could have done a lot more i mean i look at every other opportunity in my life and when i've worked these storms over 20 years you always leave something on the table I always feel like I left a lot on the table mm -hmm. and um, you know really the biggest thing for me is becoming this billion dollar CEO which honestly like is about one word from this interview maturity mm -hmm. because it's I do really good at giving inspiration being the charismatic leader having the right strategy but I think there's more patience and care in how you're delivering the message mm -hmm. that's getting more people bought in. Yeah, and that's why God put you to the right person at the right time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you might have learned all your sales stuff from Grant Cardone. I'm giving an example. Um, and you might learn the dog, the overcomer, the those things. Mm -hmm. You might have learned this from w Russell, right? Okay, but but there's there's new Russells coming out. I love Russell, but there's a new guy coming. There's a new thing happening. There's a new deal going on. You always got to be aware of like, there's always someone on the come up right now. Mm -hmm. I think we're in the era right now where we got a lot of new people that are about to come up. I'm going to call my shot here, buddy. I'm the guy that's out here wearing these uh, meta glass. I almost brought you a pair. I'm going to send you a pair. If you don't mm -hmm. have a pair, you got a pair? Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy you a pair. You, we're getting him a pair. I love it. I didn't bring it. I don't even know what they are, but okay, go ahead. But let me tell you, it's changed my game. It's literal, uh, I call them the sales trainer 2000s. And I literally put them on, and it was like one of the first or two weeks after the fight, I had these meta glasses, I wasn't using them, and I started recording the rejections and overcomes, giving real objections, real overturns, you know, and it started going viral, these videos going viral, the people's reactions. And so like this real sales training where you're out there in the field. Yeah. And you know, there's other people. Oh, there's a camera there. and the glasses. Yeah. Okay. And so it, the light comes on. and. People don't even really say anything, and I just tell them, hey, it's for recording quality control. But in reality, this is... People love to see real. I know, they love it. And it's, yeah, because it's, it's exciting. Because we've seen everything staged. Most of America like, hates door-to-door -door guys. I mm -hmm. mean, there's a big disdain for door-to-door -door people, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that I've got these Americans just saying, like, somebody pulled a gun on me, and they're like, you, they should have shot you. I'm like, thank you. And my buddy, he's an influencer trying to be, and he's like, I see all the negativity you get on this. I, I couldn't do that. Well, listen, when you're out there trying to make a name for yourself, okay, there's going to be plenty of people um, who don't believe in themselves who are going to be critics. And the deal is, is that until you give people evidence that you can become who you say you can become, there's a lot of people that won't believe you until that happens. And then there's a lot of people, even when you make it happen, 
they're still going to hate Bro, you. I've been making it happen. I, I've been putting the fucking $20 million in commercial jobs, the $100 million yeah. in builds. I've been getting the $400 million in results. I fill up the 1,000-person events. You know, we, we make – we. No matter what, even when you make the difference, they still put you on Baller Busters. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I haven't made it because I haven't got to Baller Busters, right? Yeah, I've been on there plenty. I know. <laughs> and it's like, man. Hey, but but listen, dude. The, to me, I've been getting my balls busted since I was a kid. Me too, bro. So like, so like, <laughs> like, so to me, like, dude, I listen. You know, if anybody's talking about you, you're doing something. If no one's talking about you, you're not doing nothing. Okay. Um, but but the most important thing is is. If somebody wants to follow you, Lee, right? Mm. How, how do they follow you? Follow me on Instagram. They can follow me on YouTube, Lee underscore hate. Google the YouTube, subscribe. You can follow the whole journey. And, uh, you know, it all started on Facebook. But, you know, really, like, documenting what we do and showing the world how, like, some of our most viral videos. We had a million views off this kid. He probably got bullied in high school. And Danny even was like, I can't believe you put his pitch on the Internet because it was so bad. But he was terrible, but he, it showed he had potential and he was, he was soft. He never had a leader in his life. He's broken and he needs yeah. a leader. Well, he's winning the door knocks. He's doing the most activity. That's amazing. And dude, he went viral because everybody's rooting for yeah. even the biggest loser. Well, everybody loves a movie Rocky they do. because they came back. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes watching a movie where somebody has a lot of money and then it ends with a lot of money. People like watching people like literally on rock bottom or lose it all and then come back. Because that's the that's the American dream, you know what I'm saying? And it's still alive. Just so everybody's aware, like it's still it still lives. It's still here. Um, it's still alive. And that's what we're doing. Is that we're trying to remind everybody about this thing. The that's God, the American dream. Mm-hmm, the God of this generation is comfort. The God of this generation that we live in is comfort. Mm-hmm. And we are teaching people that nobody has ever had anything great that they got by comfort. And the reason why so many people right now aren't doing any big things is because when they do something, they should ask, if I do this, will I respect myself more? If I do this thing right now, you want to talk about maturity? Like, ask yourself every time. Like, if I do this, will I respect myself more? That's a good question. Yeah, and if the answer is no, don't do it. This guy, he cheats on his wife. I can make a lot of money with him in business, though. If I hang out with that guy, will I respect myself more? No. I'm not doing business with them. It's a, it's a great way to just, it's a great question that you just ask yourself every time. If I do this, will I respect myself more? And dude, it is so, to me, that's how I matured. I, and by the way, you know who I learned that from? Who? Layla Hermosi, which oh, is Alex's sure. wife. She's a savage. I'll tell you one that's similar, but I don't think it's exactly. Myron says a prayer. It says, uh, God, give me the wisdom to serve the people you put me on this earth to serve in the way you want me to serve them and i don't know if it's a king solomon's prayer or some version of it but i i I say that one a lot good and i think you know the biggest thing that for me like this whole mission like this whole idea it all started my uncle actually like died of suicide and he was my dad's business partner and i was on the way to his funeral and i had this idea to sell granite roof and that he would be an influencer and he would make roofing cool and help me hire a bunch of salespeople, right so your friend brad and i are working on something big with this thing real roofing we're partnering Mm -hmm. up and Mm -hmm. we're going to plug people in give them an opportunity to get into the business Mm -hmm. and still to this day i'm doing the same thing that i did back then yeah except for you're the guy you're the michael jordan what's your heart and that's what i'm here for dude yeah and so it's about plugging people into this you know and so you talk about the american dream um people look at roofing and they think it's a dirty job they'll never do it and if they ask themselves this question, most people might actually say, I would lose respect for myself if I became a dirty roofer, even if I became a dirty door-to-door roofer. And so my whole life kind of had a stigma or a chip on my shoulder to raise the status for those people, for the blue-collar people or mm-hmm. anyone that's in the services. And you help do that. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we don't tell people always that it's roofing. Just tell them, hey, this is what you need to do to make get out of the rat race. Mm-hmm. But the idea is that we partner up and that you know we plug in people to an opportunity and you know the thing i'm doing with brad is events and i would like to do an event i'd like me and my friend eric i was just talking with him he did a partnership with you i'd like to pursue whatever i can to earn your trust yeah that's what i'm here to do well here's what i'll tell you big shit happens when you got big dreams and you build the right relationships you know 
and that's the way life works. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Um, but what I'm going to tell, since we're doing this podcast together, super important, mm -hmm. what it looks like when two people sit down and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. What two people can do when they're on the same mission is crazy. Iron sharpens iron. There's a lot of people in this world right now. They don't have the right people in their corner. They don't have the right, right people in their life. Okay? It's super important. Is if you've watched me and Lee just have a, a natural conversation, this is a conversation of winners. Like, this is what it sounds like when you got the right people in your corner. If you're not having conversations like this, you're probably not around the right people. Good thing is we live in an era where you can get around the right people. So listening uh, to Lee, you guys might say, man, I love this. I watch Andy's channel, and I'm like, dude, this guy's cool. You guys can go follow him on Instagram, number one. Number two, you guys can DM him, reach out to him. He clearly takes people that, you know, need a, a vehicle to get in. What does that mean? That means if you're on the wrong boat and you're rowing hard, you're not going to go anywhere. Okay, so he's talking about this roofing industry. It pays people a lot of money. They do really great. Maybe you're like, man, I need a great opportunity. Um, Lee can get you plugged in. That's cool. Also, if you got a great company, you know, you're that $1 million, $2 million, $3 million company, and you're in roofing, and you're like, how do I get to the next level? We just told you he builds these companies into $20 million buildings. He's probably a good person to DM and say, hey, let's jump on a call. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And that's how everything starts. So, Lee, let's roll this out. If there's one last thing that you want to say to anybody watching this, one thing I want to say is that Andy's office culture and all of his people are exactly what you see online and the customer service and relationship that, you know, Danny's done through the whole process, you know, it really does kind of speak of, you know, the real, I've bought a lot of personal development. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of money mm -hmm. and, you know, I just, the care factor, you know, that's the thing. And just showing me a better example of how to do that better. Yeah. Dude, how much is that going to be worth? That's what we want from you. That yeah. was what we talked about in the day one we first talked. Exactly, talked. brother. And so if y'all are watching this, guys, you know, I think that a guy that's offering coaching that doesn't get coached is the biggest fraud out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. And I have lots of coaches. And it, one thing about it is sometimes – um, if you're watching this and you're, you're, you're a roofer, it's hard for a roofer to take advice from another roofer. They think it's very competitive. But listen, a rising tide raises all ships. I can help any roofing company double or triple sales. We're growing roofing companies to buy them. We're building a billion dollar company. And, you know, I've got 400 million in results for other people and 100 million in results for myself. So I, there is no one else in my market doing that. They don't have the marketing system. Mm -hmm. They don't have the sales training. They're not running the operations, not living it. Yeah, you know the A to Z. And so if y'all are watching this and you want to plug in, you were wondering if I'm for real. I was very vulnerable looking for advice, looking for the answers to the next step without regard to the camera. Hopefully you saw a little bit of what it is for me on a daily basis. This is mm -hmm. what I'm after. And so mm -hmm. uh, enjoyed being on your podcast. Y'all connect with me. Yeah, you bet. It's going to be the beginning of something it's big. It's awesome. This yeah. is a different one. We're just shooting this shit. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. Good. All right, guys, have a blessed day. Make sure you guys follow Lee. And we'll see you in the next podcast. Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. I got lessons, lessons to give them. Think the masters and wishing, thinking, and driven, and cutting the ribbons.